house of God, worshiping God. Oh, we just had a wonderful breakfast. Thank you to everyone who brought food for that breakfast. Um, I'm hoping that I'm not going to get sleepy during this service because I had one of those giant cinnamon buns. Oh, but praise God. So I, I, there's probably going to still be some of that food left over. So after the service, make your way down to the fellowship hall and, uh, and maybe you'll get to try one of those cinnamon buns. Well, Thursday night, we gathered here, and we ended in the silence of the tomb. But today, today we gather in, in the light of the risen Christ. So listen to this account of the resurrection from Luke chapter 24. 
On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Oh, let us worship our risen Christ together.
sorry i get so excited about the resurrection i hope you do too oh praise god he arose and weren't those slides cool oh man i love that okay calm down i can't i can't all i can do is greet you greet you first of all i want to say welcome to green road church uh this is the first easter that my wife and daughters have been here at Green Road Church, and we are so happy to be celebrating the resurrection with all of you in Goshen, Indiana. Oh, and the God who conquered death is the God who greets you this morning. Receive God's greeting. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let's greet one another in the joy of the resurrection. Oh, that was the children to come on down for a special message, special Resurrection Day message. All right. Thank you for coming down, and thank you for coming down. Come on down. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Well, I want to show you guys my caterpillar. Get him over here. You ever seen a caterpillar before? Yeah? Well, if you've ever seen a caterpillar before, you know that a caterpillar doesn't stay a caterpillar, right? Kind of crawls along gets up into a tree, and then gets itself in position on that tree, and then spins a cocoon, or if you want to get really scientific, a chrysalis, and that's covered the, the caterpillar, and it appears as though that caterpillar is dead. You ever seen that? You ever seen a, oh, you're, you're getting ahead of me, but you know where I'm going with this. Yeah, now watch this. You're right, you're tracking. So it looks as though 
Have you, have you guys ever seen a caterpillar in a cocoon? Oh, it's really cool. Uh, especially some of the chrysalises that they're in are like, almost look like they have little jewels on them. But it looks like that caterpillar is dead in the tomb. But in, I don't know how long it is, not three days. But in a couple of weeks, that caterpillar emerges from that cocoon into a beautiful butterfly. Yeah, beautiful. Look at that. I love the blue ones too. I think they're called blue Morpheuses. And just like Mike, you were already thinking about when we see that, that reminds us of Jesus Christ. Because he went into the tomb, but it wasn't, he didn't just, it wasn't as though he just appeared to be dead. He was dead. And he was in that tomb for three days. But on the third day, he came out of that tomb. Not as a butterfly, but as the risen Lord. And he was raised to life in a new glorified body. One that could never be killed again. One that could never die again. So he lives forever. Yeah, Mike. Three months? Okay. Yeah, that's, maybe that's about right. But Jesus was only in the tomb for three days. Three days, and he came out as our risen Lord. Isn't that good news? And that means that death, death does not have the last word. Jesus does. And Jesus says, you will live. And that's what we celebrate at Easter. So happy Easter. Thanks for coming up. And I think if you head out the doors there, um, someone has a special... Easter class for you, a special Easter time. Thanks for coming up. There's a peace I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may break. There's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is over. The victory is won. He is risen from. Before my God, fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. There's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light and the shadows disappear. My face shall be my eyes. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The victory is won. He is risen from the dead, and I. No more sorrow, no more pain. I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. Fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. And I hear the voice of man. Bye.
Praise God. As Christians, we have so much, so much to be joyful for. So many reasons to have hope. The world always seems to be trying to drag us down, take away our hope make us despair. That's why we need to remember that Jesus is not in the tomb. He is alive. That's the reason we rejoice. Well, today we're going to be looking at a passage from John chapter 11, starting at verse 17. John chapter 11, starting at verse 17 hear not of Jesus' resurrection in this passage, but we hear of a time when Jesus raised Lazarus from the tomb. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will arise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. 
I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth across his, around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Praise God for his word. So we come to the seventh sign. For Lent this year, we've been thinking about the seven signs that John records in his gospel, revealing who Jesus is. The raising of Lazarus from the dead is the last miracle that John records in his gospel before Jesus' own resurrection. Raising Lazarus from the dead was a sign pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ gives us life. As John writes in chapter 20, verses 30 and 31, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. So the question this morning is, do you believe? Do you believe? Martha believed. <clears throat> I'm glad that John recorded these verses with Mary and Martha because we usually pick on Martha, right? While, while Mary sat at Jesus' feet, Martha was the one getting stressed out, preparing a meal for Jesus and his disciples. So we often come away from that thinking that, that Mary was the spiritual one and Martha was the, the worried, stressed out one. But in John chapter 11, we see Martha's faith shining brightly. After she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, she also said, but I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And then after Jesus asked her if she believed, she said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Martha is an example of the type of confession that John wants us to make. But it took her brother's death to draw that confession out of her. See, sometimes God allows us to go through grief and loss to deepen our faith and, and draw us closer to him. Earlier in John chapter 11, we read about how Jesus received word that Lazarus was sick. And when he heard this, he said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now notice how Jesus didn't say, he didn't say that Lazarus wouldn't die. He didn't say that. He said the sickness would not end in death. In other words, death would not have the last word. For those who believe in Jesus, death does not have the last word. Life has the last word. As Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. Perhaps Martha thought Jesus was simply trying to comfort her. Kind of like when people try to comfort those who are grieving by saying they're in a better place now. As Martha said, I know he will rise again at the last day. But Jesus wasn't talking about the last day. Jesus was talking about that day. As he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Not future tense, as in I will be the resurrection and I will be the life, 
but present tense. I am the resurrection and the life. That's because Jesus brings the future into the present. That's why we don't have to wait to experience the joy of the resurrection. We can experience it now through believing in Jesus Christ. As we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Not you will receive, but you are receiving. That's resurrection joy. Knowing that death does not have the last word fills us with an inexpressible and glorious joy. As Jesus said, the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Like Lazarus, Jesus, he didn't want Mary to miss out on that joy. So he sent for her. And and when Mary came to where Jesus was, she lamented, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. This was the exact same thing that Martha said to Jesus. But when Mary said it, there was no expression of faith. Only tears. But sometimes tears are an expression of faith. Tears are a sign of true lament. When all one can do is weep and and wonder where God was and why he didn't keep our loved one from dying. Like how Mary must have wondered where Jesus was when Lazarus was dying. Where is God when we are grieving? Where is God? Where is God? Right there with us. Feeling our pain and our sorrow, perhaps even weeping with us. As we read in Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. It must have broken Jesus' heart to watch these two sisters, whom he loved so much, have their hearts broken. Especially because he could have kept Lazarus from dying. He had the power to work miracles. As the people said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept Lazarus from dying? Yes, he could have. But that's not the point. The point was to demonstrate God's glory. Which is the greater miracle? To have kept Lazarus from dying? Or to raise Lazarus from the dead? See, Jesus allowed Lazarus to die, to give his disciples another undeniable sign revealing who he was so that they would believe. As Jesus said in John 11, verses 14 and 15, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Jesus gave them many signs to authenticate who he was. If if changing water into wine wasn't enough, if, if kicking the money changers and the merchants out of the temple wasn't enough, if, if healing the man's son just by speaking the words, your son will live, wasn't enough, if telling the man who had been crippled for 38 years to get up and the man got up, if that wasn't enough, if feeding 
well over 5,000 men, women, and children with only five small loaves of bread and two small fish. If that wasn't enough, if opening the eyes of a man who had been blind since birth wasn't enough, then certainly, certainly raising a man from the dead should be enough to believe in Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. How many more signs do you need before you'll believe? But we see another sign. Another sign in John chapter 11 revealing the kind of Savior Jesus is. As John wrote, Jesus wept. In just two words, John conveys to us that not only is Jesus the all-powerful, miracle-working God who can raise the dead, but he is also compassionate and feels our pain. Jesus wept. With these two words, John reminds us that Jesus is not some unfeeling, otherworldly divine being devoid of human emotion and empathy. He's not a Vulcan. If you don't understand that reference, please talk to Chuck Osterday after the service. Fellow Trekkie. Fellow Trekkie. Talk to Chuck. He'll explain the reference to you. Jesus is the Son of God. But he is also fully human. Just without sin. Jesus is well acquainted with our grief and our sorrow, and he has experienced firsthand the pain that death causes as it separates loved ones from one another. Jesus wept just like he weeps with us when we grieve. And that day at Lazarus' tomb, Jesus was about to go head to head with life's greatest enemy, death. As John writes, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. Deeply moved to the point of indignation. He wasn't going to let death win. So he stepped up to the tomb, letting out a deep, Exhale as he did. <sighs> like a fighter does when the bell rings. In commenting on this verse, John Kelvin said, Christ does not come to the tomb as an idle spectator, but like a wrestler preparing for the contest. Therefore, no wonder he groans again. For the violent tyranny of death, which he had to overcome, stands before his eyes. As Jesus was ready for the showdown, he said, take away the stone. And Martha, the practical one, full of faith, but very practical, said, but Lord, by this time, there's a bad odor. For he's been there four days. I love the way the King James Version puts this. Lord, by this time, he stinketh. It's a, great, it's a great version. To which Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? And standing at, before the tomb, facing death head on, Jesus called Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Death had no choice but to let Lazarus go. That's because the word of God is more 
powerful than death. As we read in 1 Corinthians 15, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that, brothers and sisters, is what Easter is all about. As we sang at the beginning of the service, death in vain forbids him rise. Christ has opened paradise. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we still grieve. We still grieve the death of loved ones, but we grieve in the hope of knowing that death does not have the last word. Jesus does. As Jesus said in John 14, because I live, you also will live. And as Lazarus came shuffling, shuffling out of the tomb, still, still wrapped in the grave clothes, Jesus told the people, take off those grave clothes and let him go. Imagine the rejoicing and the laughter as they unwrapped Lazarus and maybe even Martha, as she gave him a great big hug, maybe gave him a few sniffs. <laughs> wow, he doesn't even stinketh. <laughs> Jesus wept, but following this, I imagine that Jesus laughed. Jesus mourns with those who are mourning. And Jesus rejoices with those who are rejoicing like we are today. The good news is that Jesus' resurrection is a sign pointing to our own resurrections. When we will be raised to new life in new glorified bodies, never to die again. That's a reason to be joyful. But the resurrection isn't only a future promise. It's not just a future promise like, like Mary was thinking. Resurrection happens every time somebody believes in Jesus Christ. Every time somebody believes in Jesus Christ, Jesus raises them to new life to experience the joy and the hope of the resurrection. You see, we were all like Lazarus, dead in our sins. Until Jesus came to the tombs of our lives and said, take away the stone, and then Jesus called our names. Lisa, Rod, Catherine, Emily, Jean, Jackie, Shirley, Carol, John, Justin, Nancy, Karen, Eric. I could keep going, but I think you'll get the point. Until he called our names and said, come out. And, and just like La Lazarus, I almost called him Larry. <laughs> and just like Larry, <laughs> maybe that was like what people called him. Just like Lazarus, we can't help but respond. Jesus' voice is too powerful, too compelling. That's irresistible grace. So, so we come shuffling out of the tombs of our lives, still wrapped in our grave clothes. And then Jesus says to his church, he says to Green Road Church, take off the grave clothes and let them go. That's the church's job. Jesus is the one who raises people to new life. We can't do that. We're not the Savior. We're not the Messiah. We're not the Son of God. That's, only Jesus has the power to do that. But once Jesus raises somebody to new life, he says, Church, get those grave clothes off of those people and tell them the truth. Teach them the truth about who Jesus really is, the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, so that they may have life in Jesus' name. As Jesus said in John 8, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Green Road Church, the truth this morning is that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. 
Hallelujah. Do you want to be free? Do you want to be free from shame? Do you want to be free from guilt? Do you want to be free to experience God's love? Free to, to love your neighbor as yourself? Free to experience joy? Free from the fear of death? Then believe. Believe. You see, Jesus isn't going to let death win. So he went to the cross and he allowed himself to be killed. He allowed himself to die. And then he was sealed in a tomb. And on the third day, God said, Jesus, come out. And Jesus was raised back to life. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that Jesus Christ is not in the tomb he is not dead. He is very much alive. And as he promised, because he lives, we too shall live. Lord, please drive that truth deep within our hearts so that as we face death in this life, whether it's the death of a loved one or the death of a relationship or the death of a dream, or whatever deaths and disappointments and despair that we come up against in this life, that we would not give in to that, that we would not let the darkness overwhelm us, but the light of Jesus Christ would overwhelm the darkness and fill us with joy and hope, so that even though we may still grieve, we grieve in the hope of knowing that you are alive. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this series has been all about believing, believing in Jesus Christ. So I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we sing, We Believe.
and he's coming back again. When the lost be found and the dead be raised, in the here and now, let love invade. Let the church live loud, our God will say, we believe, we believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn the veil. Now we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit, and he's given us to life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. We believe. Do you believe? Then receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. And now let's leave here today in resurrection power. Living in the light of your goodness, you 
have given us freedom. Now I have resurrection power, living on the inside, Jesus. You have given us freedom. Now no longer bound by sin and darkness, living in the light of your goodness. You have given us freedom. Because he lives, I can praise tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know, I know, he holds the future. Thank you. 